This video is going to discuss um, some procedures. Um, again, we're going to add in uh, a little bit more detail. Let's take a look at uh, the first one, and we'll just go through a series of graduated sub procedures that are similar but different. <laughs> okay, so this is a fairly simple example. We got our main driver again, and as a reminder, the name of this procedure, main, is just arbitrary, but it's a nice name. And we're calling a single sub procedure. And let's take a look at this sub procedure. It's quite simple. You'll notice the first thing we do is declare a range, uh, a variable. And I'm doing this simply for additional examples with doing this kind of thing. There are lots of different ways to write code, and a lot of the code I write is simply to give you experience and examples of different things. So the next statement, of course, sets that range. And again, notice that set keyword that's critical. And so to set a range, we specify the starting cell and the ending cell. So in this case, it's basically uh, row 1, column 1, through row 10, column 1. And then we simply use that range variable to set the interior color to some color. So I'm going to run this and just take a look at what it does. And it set that uh, range of cells there to that purple color. Now I have a clear all... Uh, procedure on my in my workbook here so I can just hit that to clear everything. Um, while we're talking about it, let's go ahead and take a look at that clear all. It's quite simple. I actually use the macro recorder to tell me how to do it and it's actually quite simple. So clear all basically says cells. Cells refers to every cell on your worksheet. And then we say dot select. That's the uh, action that we want to take on those cells. Then you simply say selection.clear. Now I could have said cells.clear and skipped the two statements here and just made it one statement. But this is just the way the, the uh, macro recorder did it and I just left it that way. And then I said cells11.select so that I could move the selection to that particular location on the sheet. So that's pretty simple. Let's go back to our code. Now the issue that I was going to bring up in this particular piece of code, it's quite simple. It's a nice little subroutine. It does its thing. But unfortunately, there's several things wrong with it. One is, it's always going to color the same range, these same cells. And the second one is, it's always going to color with the same exact color. So something that's very important when you're creating subprocedures is to have this ability to pass values to the subprocedure to communicate with our subprocedure in essence it'd be nice if we could tell the subprocedure what exact range we wanted and that way we'd have a much more flexible subprocedure because we can pass in the range and it'll do its thing um, for us and therefore it's flexible and can be reused over and over again so this notion of code reuse is a critical idea so let's take a look at an example of that code so You'll notice things are a little bit different here. Um, this, the main driver is a little bit different, but not dra dramatically. You'll notice the color cells procedure call now has four numbers following the name of the procedure. So those four numbers represent where we want to color the cells. We want to color the cells from row 1, column 10. Is that what that is? Well, we don't know. We don't know what each of those numbers represents. Well, let's go take a look at the procedure. Maybe this procedure will tell us what they represent. So we have a little comment here. It says color range of cells, passing the start row and column and the end row and column. And then we take a look at this procedure heading. Now, this is totally new. You haven't seen anything like this unless you've been you know, reading ahead in the book. What we're able to do here is we're able to declare four variables, start row and end row and start column and end column. We're able to declare these variables. Notice it says start row as long. So that's a variable declaration. But instead of putting dim in front of it, we use the keyword by val. Now, you'll notice the author a lot of times does not do this in the book. And in fact, many times the author doesn't even declare the data type of the variable. Well, I basically strongly encourage you to put by val in front of every variable you declare in your subprocedure heading. Again, notice the open parenthesis and then the close parenthesis here. Everything we've done before has just had an open and close parenthesis. Here's an example up here on main with no parameters. These are known as parameters. Parameters are something that you can use as like placeholders to fill in the real values when you run your program. 
So we have a parameter start row, and we have a parameter end row, and you'll notice that I have the line continuation character here, so I can go down to the next line. And then start column and end column. Now the parameters in your subprocedure heading match exactly to what they call the argument list when you call the subprocedure. So here's the call to that subprocedure, and this is the argument list. So the first argument goes with the first parameter, and the second argument, the 10, goes with the second parameter. And they match up one to one. So that one is the start column, and that two is the end column. So what we're doing is we're passing in the range that we want to color. Well, this makes this particular procedure much more flexible. So we go ahead and declare our range variable, then we say set the range, but instead of having hard-coded numbers in here for our cells, we use our parameters. Start row, start column, end row, and end column. And then we go ahead and color that interior. Let's go ahead and see if this works. I'll run the main up here. I'll click in main and hit F5. And it colored exactly the cells we were expecting. Okay, let's go back and look at the next one. We've still got one problem here, of course, and that is... The color doesn't get passed in, but let's take a look at the next code. So this particular example is a little bit different. Um, it's not going to take care of the color, but notice what I'm doing here is I'm declaring my range variable in the main, and then when I call color cells, I pass in the range variable. Well, very similar situation with the parameter list. In this case, again, I use the by val, but instead of declaring a bunch of longs, I declare a range variable. Notice it says as range, and then I can just use that range variable directly to do the interior color, and that way I can pass in any range I want, and it'll change the color. Let's go ahead and run that one. Click back up in main, hit the go button, take a look. It worked like a champ. So let's take a look at the last piece of code here. The last piece of code basically is going to take care of both issues. It's going to pass the range in and it's going to pass a color in. So again, you'll notice up here I declare a range variable and I set that range to whatever I want it to be. Here I'm setting it to 1, 1 and 10, 2. But I could set that range to any old thing. And here I declare my color uh, variable and I go ahead and store that in a color variable. And you know, in the run of this program that color could change a lot. So I set that color variable to RGB, and it has to be a long. If you're going to store an RGB value in it, you have to declare that as a long. And now here's the call to my subprocedure. In this case, you'll notice I'm passing in the range, and I'm passing in the color. And so this makes this particular procedure extremely flexible. So anytime somebody wants to color a range, all i got to do is pass a range variable in and pass in some color. And let's take a look at that procedure. In this case, the very first parameter is the range and that matches with the call to the subprocedure the range was the first one in the call to the subprocedure and the range is the first one here in the parameter list the second one is my color and of course it's a long and again it matches with the second argument in the call to the subprocedure and so here's the uh, parameter in the parameter list and then finally the statement is quite simple it basically says range dot interior color equals the color and the color of course is the variable name that we have here in our parameter list and it goes ahead and changes the color let's go ahead and see if this works I'll click in the main and hit F5 take a look and see what happened and indeed it did change that range perfectly as we expected so this particular sub procedure then is the most flexible one of all in the sense that we can pass in a range and a color and it does its job. So creating these procedures and giving them nice names adds a lot of readability to your program because who could who would have difficulty understanding what the name there means, you know, color cells. And you pass it a range and you pass it it's pretty clear what that's going to do. And so Somebody might be looking at this particular statement down here, and it's you know it's fairly clear what that's going to do. But what if you hung the RGB on the end here? That's a little bit more complicated. But now they can just call this anytime they want, pass in a range, pass in a color, and it'll do its job. Now these are pretty simple examples, but I hope they're demonstrating some of the key ideas of declaring the parameter list in your procedure headings. You want to use the by val, you want to declare the variable name, and you want to give the data type of that variable. Okay, so. Give this code a, a practice run just to make sure you understand what's happening with this.